everybody. Welcome. It's another episode of Osprey Observer TV. Your host, Johnny Torres, and with me, as always, Editor-in-Chief of the Osprey Observer, Marie Gilmore. Say hi, Marie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We've got a great show for you today, and we're talking about important family members, and not just any family members, our furriest of family members, and uh, a lot of folks out there with new furry family members. And so uh, Marie has got a special interview for us today with Canine Cabana. I'm really excited about today's interview. One of my favorite people in one of my favorite businesses in the whole area is Kendall Duncan. She and her business partner, Angie, own Canine Cabana. And during this whole quarantine and global pandemic, they've been immediately adjusting their business model to accommodate changes, guidelines. They immediately offered an essential worker discount at their business for dog, dog lodging and care. And now they have an adventure camp, which I kind of want to go to. But thank you so much for joining us today, Kendall. Tell us just a little bit about your business, how you've been adjusting, and what's coming up for you in your business. Yes, well, thank you so much for having me. I love talking about dogs, dogs, dogs. So Canine Cabana, we offer dog lodging, which is overnight accommodations. We also offer daycare, where um, our clients drop their dogs off for the day, and then we wear them out, and we exercise them mentally and physically, and then they go home for the night, and then we also offer training, a variety of training services. Um, you know, we really had to adjust a lot. I know everyone in our community has with um, the coronavirus and um, the pandemic that's going on. So really our our lodging dropped off immediately because that was right up spring break. So we were down probably about 90% in lodging um, for that. So what we really concentrated on was just our daycare. What does our community need? All of a sudden our, our um, clients were home, they were working, they were like us, they're on Zoom and they were on the phone and their dog wanted their attention. And so they were barking, there was somebody at the door, there's somebody at the pool. Um, and so what we recognized was that clients really needed to be able to work from home um, without having that disruption. So uh, they were learning, it was a learning process. So yep, we started getting a little bit more daycare coming in during the day. Um, something we did to make sure that our team and our clients were safe was we immediately closed our lobby doors. Um, and we have a little bit of a side entrance so it's like a two gate system. So our clients can walk through one gate, they can take all the equipment off the dogs. We're about six to eight feet away behind a secondary gate. And then we can call the dog right through the gate and then they come in with us and they love coming to play. So it wasn't a problem calling them through. <laughs> They're like, see ya. So uh, the dogs were happy to get a little bit of uh, dog friends and time away from home as well. So that's one thing we did uh, pretty much take everything over the phone. If my um, lobby, our customer care team goes outside, they have masks on and they're able to have our iPads, everything is paperless and just talk with the clients and put everything in that they need. Um, and then we've been doing training. So that's another thing that has changed dramatically. We were doing group classes as well as private. And since this came on, we started doing online Zoom training. So that has been fun. That has been a lot of fun. And um, the, I have a little puppy at my foot, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so the online Zoom, so that people were still felt safe in their own homes, but that they could still continue to work their dogs and uh, have a little bit of fun with them, have fun with their children and their dogs at the same time. And then we also offered the private training where people will drop their dogs off for the day. We do training, socialization, and then they go home for the evening. So um, those are a couple of the ways that we've changed what we're doing and that our clients really seem to appreciate and like. Yes, well, and this is good timing for training because from what I've seen on all my social media feeds, knowing my neighbors, there are a lot of new puppies, quarantine puppies so out there. Any puppies, puppies, puppies. I think there's even a cash tag. So it's like COVID puppy. Yeah, <laughs> so there, everyone has a puppy. Most of our training right now is puppy socialization program. Um, and we really teach them about the wonders of the world because they can't socialize with their neighbors and their friends. And at the dog parks right now, it's kind of up to us to help them introduce new things into their world. Otherwise, you get a very fearful and reactive puppy. And so when they drop them off for puppy socialization, we introduce them to new noises. They get to meet every person in our facility. We get to pass the puppy where everybody touches them and puts their hands on them and positively reinforces them for that. So um, yeah, it's been really important through this time. And our training is something that has been um, helping us out during not having much lodging. So it's, it's been a win. 
Amazing. Because I see so many puppies out there. I think it's really important that people take this time while they do have the time to bring them, drop them off and pick them up to go ahead and do that training, not wait until school goes back into session in August, right? Right. They really need to start the sooner the better. We like once they have all their puppy series completed, did you want to say hi? Um, that we can then start immediately with them because it will be important. Once you hit school next August or September, you've missed a really critical time in their life for socialization and introducing them to new dogs as well. So yeah, it's been nice that people are taking advantage of it. Yeah, don't be selfish, Kendall. I know you got a puppy over there. We want to see it. <laughs> I see the puppy. This is Miss Sophie. How cute! Oh, is look at that cuteness. Aww. I know she's a little Bichon mix. No, she's a Cotton de la Tour. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I, I know <laughs> she's a fancy one. Yeah. yeah, very fancy. And I know during quarantine, Kendall, there was a really beautiful story that came out of Canine Cabana about a young lady who happened yeah. to fall in her home and her first call was not 911 her first call was not her children no. can you tell us a little bit about that so she was just precious and she did fall and she did hurt herself and we were trying to convince her to call 911 but she said she would not call an ambulance until she knew that her dogs were well taken care of so um, she actually had called us four years prior just to look into us she wasn't going anywhere but just in case and then this happened. So it was, it was um, what a beautiful kind of setting because we immediately said, we will come get the dogs, but only if you call 911 first and we'll meet Aww. the ambulance there and then we'll help and then we'll take care of everything. So um, that's what we did. And we did have to keep them. Uh, my team met her there. Everybody had masks, the ambulance, um, the EMTs were amazing and they helped bring the dogs into the backyard so we could safely retrieve them. And they were the sweetest, sweetest schnauzer mixes. And uh, they did really well with us. And uh, I have a new friend from the experience. We texted a lot when she was in the hospital. I felt just, you know, I felt bad for her that she had to go through that without her dogs or her family because nobody can be in the hospital with you. And um, But once she got home, she did very well. And uh, I think we had the dogs almost three weeks. And uh, then we were able to bring them back home. And yeah to be with their mom so and help her so it was good it was what i was grateful that we could stay open uh we weren't sure if we would be deemed essential it sounds kind of silly like who needs a, a dog place but emergencies happened we were certainly wanting to stay open in case any of our neighbors got sick and needed extra help and or had to go to the hospital that we could stay open for them and then we have a lot of first responders and we have a lot of essential workers so you know, they work, some of our nurses work 12 hour shifts. We needed to make sure that we could help them out, um, you know, so that their puppies could potty and their, their dogs still were getting exercise. So. Well, exactly. And then they don't have to be concerned that because they're out of the house for 13, 14 hours a day, that they're not able to care for their loved ones right. like they want to. Yeah. So that's amazing. Absolutely essential. And in this circumstance, crucial. Yeah. What would that poor woman have done if you weren't there? So I'm so thankful you were there for her. Oh, I am too. Thank you. Yes. Well, Kendall, so we were talking a little bit about uh, the quarantine puppies, right? You know, and uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, we've even heard that Humane Societies and, the you know, and the County Dog Shelter all, you know, virtually empty, uh, which is an amazing thing, right? Um, but uh, let's talk about as things get back to normal, as we have done in these past few episodes, uh, what are some of the signs that people should look for in regards to separation anxiety? And maybe if you don't mind sharing with us maybe some tips to help them overcome that, uh, and, and, and obviously how Canine Cabana can help them through this as well. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, we're all home 24 seven with each other with our dogs. And uh, there's a lot of comfort for that for our canine friends, and not our feline friends, probably, but our canine. Friends. <laughs> I know all my cats are like, are y'all leaving yet? You need to get out. Um, so one way you can tell if your dog has separation anxiety, if you go into another room, and you close the door, and they whine, and they cry, and they can't settle down, then you might have a little bit of a problem if you leave the house. Um, if you, we really highly recommend that some of our, our clients, what they do is um, either bring your dog to daycare um, so that while you're running errands, they're having fun and they're staying busy mentally and physically. And then that way it gives them a little bit of a release also. And then they come home nice and tired from y'all. Um, something that we are telling people is, you know, although it's great to go for walks with your dogs and we highly suggest it because they need exercise, go for a walk without your dog. 
So it might take baby steps for that. You might not be able to just leave the house right away. If you leave the house and you notice that your dog is scratching at the door, barking, crying, you'll want to take a step back and say, okay, let's get something like a busy bone. Let's get a Kong toy. You can stuff that Kong toy with peanut butter. You can even freeze that Kong toy. And then it gives them something to work on while you're gone. So I suggest you get a Kong, it's frozen. They get to you can either put them in their crate if they're young or if they're adults and they stay out in the house, you know, a place you don't mind having maybe a little some licking and some peanut butter and um, <laughs> keep them busy, leave, go for a five, 10 minute walk, then come back to the house. So you kind of want to come back before they're done with that busy bone or with that Kong toy. And so they're like, oh, whatever. I, this is something great that happened while you guys were gone. I mean, I'm happy you're back, but it's fine. Um, and then you kind of just play that out longer and longer. So even maybe if you go then for a 30 minute walk or, um, you know, because then what they're going to do is they're going to go every time my parents leave the house, they give me this like awesome bone to chew on. You know, there's different things you can get from the health food stores for them that is um, natural. So it won't hurt their bellies. So anything like that, heavily reinforce them with something good that they only get when you leave. So that way they're not that sad when you leave. <laughs> exactly. Like your children when they go to school and then, you, you know. <laughs> so. We've got about one last minute for our interview before we wrap up. And I know you've got some new things coming up. So tell me about Adventure Camp. So we have um, a brand new program called our Cabana Adventure Club. And what that is, is we're having different um, activities throughout the week. So they can join either by the day or they can come in for the week. It's up to them. It's an add on. Um, and I'm trying to think, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. Uh, but we have like mystical and magical days and it'll be like fun things like under the sea. And then we have like um, the July 4th celebration. So they'll be able to go home with um, a July 4th picture of their dog, you know, painted. And there's just different fun celebrations throughout the whole week. Um, one thing is like that we're doing is water park. So we're completely doing something um, different in a different yard for the dogs and they can go and enjoy sprinklers and they can go and enjoy um, all of our dog pools. Um, there's one week, I think it's like traveling in the USA. So we're doing things from California, from Florida, from, um, I don't know where else, Arizona, Texas, different things like that. So, um, and each day will be different activities. And there'll be pictures so everyone can come to Canine Cabana Florida on Facebook and check out all the fun, you know, pictures that we're going to be doing also. Well, so. I have seen pictures from previous events like the doggy Oscars with red carpet premieres and the right. doggy competitions with the voting and who wins the little Oscar. So I know it's a fierce competition between dog parents of who's the best of the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you do. You're you so did. welcome. Thank you. You are absolutely an essential service to our community, Kendall. You and Angie have done a wonderful job building Canine Cabana, and Thank it's you. been just absolutely a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, you guys. Thank you both so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you again to Kendall and the whole team at Canine Cabana. I'm just uh, incredibly disappointed that I didn't get to uh, hug on some puppies. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's all right. Soon enough. Soon enough. Uh, thank you to them for their amazing interview and everything they're doing for our community. Uh, of course, lots going on as we continue to come out of this quarantine. Uh, what's the latest at Osprey Observer Marine? So we're really excited. Every summer for the last 18 years, we've always had interns that come in during the summer and learn a little bit about the newspaper business. They typically come in for about 100 hours, write stories, get some bylines, and get the experience between high school, college. We've even had a Harvard student that's come home for the summer and come in and been an intern with us. This summer is no different. We actually have eight interns. Uh, Newsom High School, Durant High School, University of Florida. We are very excited that they are with us and we're doing it a little bit differently because we're doing virtual internships this summer with lots of Zoom meetings, trainings, and this week they're all on their first assignment and they might be contacting you. But because we have so many extra hands doing stories in the community, we can use some more story ideas. So if you have an idea you'd like to send in, we'd love to hear it. This is the time we have the extra help. We've got all those interns ready to write stories. Editor at OspreyObserver.com is my email address. Send me a story idea. This is the time of year we're happy to cover. And again, we're still, we've talked about it once before. I'll mention it again. We've been getting great response. 
to our Osprey Observer Marketing Grant opportunity. We have over 15 applications already. We'll continue taking applications for the next few weeks, but we're offering marketing and advertising grants for small businesses for up to $1,000 that we're going to help with print marketing, social media, video, whatever we can do to help keep those businesses on their feet. So please go to our website, look on our social media, and go ahead and apply if you could utilize that grant this summer. We're happy to help, especially for the businesses that were closed down for those nine weeks. Restaurants, our nail shops, our dentists, our orthodontists, we're really eager to help them get back on their feet now that they're finally open with some restrictions. So thank you for what you do and how you provide for our community. And please, we'd love to consider you for a grant. Yeah, I mean, again, every little bit's going to help the you know our community get back on its feet, especially if you're a local business owner. I mean, this is a robust marketing grant, and so please take advantage of that. Head over to ospreyobserver.com for more information and details on how to apply, and good luck to all you business owners out there applying for that marketing grant. And thank you to everybody for watching. This has been another episode of Osprey Observer TV. On behalf of Marie Gilmore, Editor-in-Chief of the Osprey Observer and the entire team, over at Osprey Observer. I'm Johnny Torres, your host. This has been another episode of Osprey Observer TV. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.